Welcome back to Fantasy Island, guys. It's R.W. King here with your week three must starts. That's right, guys. The reality is, man, there's a lot of guys we can sit on the bench. You know, one of the things I want to do is my condolences out to uh, Nick Chubb's season and the fantasy owners. Nick Chubb's a great guy. And remember, guys, fantasy owners out there, remember, these are real people. So I know it sucks that he's not on your fantasy team anymore, but, you know, give him a little thought there and you know, they lost a good person on their team and they lost somebody they can't replace and they can't replace a guy like Nick Chubb in their organization. So I hope he makes it back. This is the second big knee injury. He had one when he was at Georgia. So I hope he can come back. I hope he talks to Dr. Elitrosh or one of those badass dudes and gets himself all fixed up, man, and back healthy run into you, Mr. Nick Chubb. All right, so going into our week three starts, must starts of the week, we're going to sit here and we're going to say, okay, look, guys, it hasn't been what it's supposed to be in fantasy this week. It hasn't been what it's supposed to be in fantasy this season yet. But I think going forward, it's going to start shaking out a little bit. And I want to talk about, at least let's talk about my guy again, Tua. Tua for MVP. He's definitely a must start every week. Popping 466 yards the first game, three touchdowns, over 27 fantasy points. He came down to earth last week, but he played Belichick. He had 249 yards, one touchdown, only 12 and a half points fantasy-wise, but the game just shook out a little bit differently. I think this week they're back at home. I think it's their first game at home, actually, so I think they're going to be doing really good. They're going to be pumped up at home. I really love them in the first game. They played Denver at home. I think the Heat's really going to have a little bit of an issue with them in the humidity. So I think by the second half, two is going to be able to pop the stuff over the top. I know Jalen Waddle's a little bit banged up with concussion. So I'm not sure if he's going to be active or not. He hasn't practiced this week up to this point. So not really sure what we're looking at as far as the receivers, but I think he can spread the ball and distribute it enough to keep the cheetah involved and keep that double, triple team kind of shit off him. But I love me some two as a must start this week, along with Captain Kirk Cousins. Captain Kirk Cousins has been tearing it up all, all year. He's throwing the shit out of the ball because he can't run the ball. Justin Jefferson's definitely the benefit of this. I mean, there's other guys that are doing it, but I mean, the reality is Kirk Cousins has, to, has already thrown for over 700 yards in the first two games, six touchdowns. He's putting up numbers every week and they're playing an LA Chargers team that has just given up big chunks to everybody. Their secondary suspect again, they're already hurt on their defensive line. Bosa's hurt again after the first week, no pressure on the quarterback, blah, blah, blah. Same story, Chargers stink defensively. I like me some Kirk Cousins this week, guys. Play him at home. Justin Jefferson loving that turf at home. Going for it. I think I just think they're going to just do really good. I think it's going to be a shootout that game. I like Kirk Cousins. I like Tua as my must start to quarterback this week. Now moving to my running backs. Again, man, this guy got fucking blasted last week against Buffalo. Buffalo was supposed to have a really good defense, but in the first game, in the first week, they gave up over seven yards of carry between the tackles. Josh Jacobs did not do well. He had nine carries for minus two yards against Buffalo last week. They sort of abandoned the run game after and were dumping up little short passes. But I like him in a bounce back game this week. I like him against Pittsburgh this week. Pittsburgh, again, a little suspect to the run. I, I think they're banged up defensively. I think just their, their gas tanks aren't going to be uh, fully replenished after the uh, Monday night game. And it was a tough Monday night game for him. You know, it wasn't easy. So I really like Josh Jacobs to bounce back in this game. I like the offensive line to really step up and do some stuff. I got Josh Jacobs around 150 yards rushing with two touchdowns. So I like me some Josh Jacobs this week. I also love me some Brian Robinson. I think going forward, I think you got to look at what's going on, the trending up here. I think if he wouldn't have got shot in the ass last year, he would have already been, his trajectory would have been much higher by the end of the season. And he would have been talked about as a, that second level type of running back this year. But I think going forward, I think he's going to be the guy here. I think um, just looking at what's going on, he's had 15 carries in each one of the first two games. So his, the first game he had 59 uh, yards rushing, ended up with 14, just a little bit over 14 fantasy points, but he had a, re a receiving TD. So that saved his day there. But the second week is really, really produced. He had 15 carries, 87 yards rushing, and threw in 42 receiving yards there. So he blew up, and he had 29.9 points at touchdown. He, he was just tearing it up. So 
I love me some Brian Robinson going forward. I just, I think that even the reality is he might even be almost matchup proof just because of what they're doing down there. They don't really going to air out the ball with Sam Howell. They're going to protect him. They want to run the ball. Antonio Gibson's a non-factor. If you look at it last year, like I was saying before he got shot in the ass, Antonio Gibson was just going to return kicks. Then homeboy got fucking carjacked. Those are my two must-starts at running back. Josh Jacobs, Brian Robinson. All right, guys, I got a couple guys here at a receiver that I'm looking at for week three as must-starts. And the first one I'm going to talk about is a guy who stunk it up both games, first game, just fucking stunk. He actually had 79-yard receiving, a little over 14 fantasy points. Second game disappeared. The guy on the other side of the ball from him or the guy on the other side of the line from him, his receiver mate is tearing it up. But he's supposed to be the man. And I'm talking about A.J. Brown in Philly. A.J. Brown has been throwing stinkers. I really expect them to bounce back this week. I think they're going to make a concerted effort. He hasn't scored a touchdown in the first two games. Plug him in. He's a must start. You got to make sure and get him going. All right, I think that those kind of guys like that, again, just he's going to have his. And by the end of the year, he's going to his, the cream rises to the crop. So to me, I'm looking at it like he hasn't had done well in the first two weeks. He's going to have a big game here pretty soon. So I'm playing him. Even if he has a stinker this week, That's I'm even more excited for the following week because that means another big week's coming for him. Another guy I want to start is a guy who really did well last week. He actually had some opportunities the first week, but really the targets weren't there for him. But Gabe Davis, I think that what they're doing in Buffalo and what they have is, and I think Stephon Diggs has sort of throttled back his bullshit a little bit. And he's realizing, dude, you can't get thrown the ball when there's a bracket coverage on you every play. So I'm thinking last week they just started fucking flowing a little bit better. And they started throwing the ball a little bit more to Gabe Davis. He had six receptions on seven or eight targets for 92 yards and a tutty. He had a 21-point game. I can see him doing that every week going forward and flashing for big games. Remember, this is the guy who's the king of the 90-yard touchdown. So I like me some Gabe Davis this week as well. I like the matchup there. A.J. Brown, Gabe Davis, R.W. King start at wide receiver for week three. 